Hi folks, Glyn here. I thought I'd put together a really, really quick tutorial to show you a technique that I'm done on a picture that I've almost finished. Uh, and it's a technique that I showed uh, a written version of on my blog, oh blimey, a few weeks ago now. Uh, just to show how I actually managed to cut out this liquid here, which you can see in this picture. Because this is a, it's a composite picture. It's uh, myself, uh, my buddy Dave, and this female model here. We're all being composited into this picture, which is yet to be finished. Um, but when we're in the studio photographing Dave, we wanted to make it look as if this coffee here was overflowing and it was getting all messy. But what we didn't do was photograph it like that in the studio because it wasn't a studio of mine. I didn't want to make too much mess. So pouring the coffee from that height into the cup, it was going to spill onto the floor and splash up onto the seamless paper backgrounds. And that's going to cost money to replace. So we did it in a different way. What we did was actually get Dave, once we'd done the photos of us all stood up, we got uh, Dave to kneel down on the floor and just pour the coffee past the cup into a bucket like we did here. So all that I needed to do then was get rid of the liquid on the, or sorry, get rid of, take the liquid off this picture and put it into this picture here. Because if I just zoom in, we can see we've got the flask, we've got the cup and then the liquid overflowing, but that actually wasn't there. So I want to show you how very, very quickly we can cut that liquid out of its original background. So let's just turn that off and we'll jump over to the picture that contains the liquid overflowing in the cup. Now all I'm gonna do here is just gonna get something as simple as my lasso tool, and I'm gonna make a very, very rough selection just to include that liquid, like so. So we can come all the way up, over the cup, and around about there is fine. Then I'm gonna press Command or Control J to put it onto its own layer, which we can see just there now. Then I'm just gonna get my uh, Move tool, Get my move tool and drag that over and onto the picture here where we're doing the compositing. Now at the moment it's pretty big so we need to resize that. So I'm going to go to edit and free transform. And just so I can see it all, I'm going to press command zero. And that zooms out now so I can see everything. I can see the whole picture. So now I'm going to resize this. I'll hold down my shift key and my option key and I can resize that all in proportion. In fact, let's just zoom in just a little bit. Something like that. Let's just resize it down to maybe around about there. And I get my move tool. And what I'll do now is I'll just position it where I want it. So let's just zoom up onto the mug here. Somewhere around about there would be fine. I'm using my up arrow keys and my right arrow keys just to position it where I want it. Now you'd think that this would be quite difficult to select off the background to get rid of all the grey in that bit of cup. But we don't actually have to make any selection whatsoever. You see, there's something in Photoshop you may have heard of and you may not have used, and that's the blend if sliders. They're incredibly powerful in Photoshop. Now to get to those, here's the layer that contains the, the cutout of the liquid here, the little one from off the other picture. So I'll turn that on and off, so it's the very, very top layer, and it's actually called layer four here. Now if I get my cursor and I put it to the right-hand side of where it says layer four, and I double click, it brings up the layer style dialog box. And this is where we find all the drop shadows, inner shadows, and all inner glows, and all that kind of nice stuff. But in the main dialog box at the bottom, we've got where it says blend if. And these are the blend if sliders. And like I said, these are incredibly powerful. So when I was doing this picture, to take the gray out of this and the bit of the blue cup, we can start to play around with these sliders and we can interact how layers, sorry, we can adjust how layers interact with each other. So how a layer on top interacts with a layer below it and so on. So for this here, all I did was I started playing around with the sliders. I left it where it says blend if, I left it on gray and I started dragging the slider around and you can see that it, it has kind of an effect there where I drag it all the way over to the right hand side here. Yeah, I know it's not a perfect selection or it's not a perfect um, adjustment there, but we can see that the grey is gone. So there's definitely potential here. But we don't want that transition to be quite as hard as what it is because that doesn't look realistic at all. But what we can do here to make it look a little bit more realistic, you see this little black triangle that I can move across here. If I hold down my Option key or my Alt key, depending on if you're working on Mac or PC, we can actually split this triangle into two. So I'm holding down my Alt key or my Option key, clicking on this triangle, and you'll see it splits in two. So I can now drag this over to the right, 
start to make sure that that grey starts to disappear. Then I can start bringing in the other slider, adjusting it just to get to the point where it looks as if they're going. Now, I played around with this for a short while and I found that doing it on where it says grey didn't do all that of a good job. There's definitely potential, but it wasn't the best job. So all I did was reset these sliders back to their starting point. And then I came in here and started playing with the channels we've got. We've got red, green, and blue. And I first of all tried the red channel. And it actually did a really good job. So obviously within this gray and within the, the coffee, there is an element of red. So again, I just clicked on the triangle, dragged it across and saw that, yeah, the gray was going. But then again, I held down my option key and split the triangle and dragged over to the right. And I just kept dragging it over until I could start to see that gray disappearing a little bit. Then I click on the other slider and bring that in and start fine tuning it to the point where all the grey goes and the blue from the mug that we brought over, leaving us just the liquid. And there we go. It's as simple as that. I've not had to make any selection, any cutouts. I've not used any of the extraction tools that we have within Photoshop, like Refine Edge. Getting rid of this liquid off this background, or taking this liquid off its background rather, would be really difficult because the edges aren't very defined. There's motion in there, so there's a bit of blur. Not an easy thing to cut out, but we can do it so easy using the blend dish sliders. So if anything, this is a, a technique to show you, but also a tip. And the tip being, just play around with Photoshop. You're going to play around in menus and see things that you maybe think, you don't know what it does, and you'll never probably use it. But you can't break it. Just click on some sliders, put ticks in boxes, and just see what effect it has on the whole picture. It can be amazing the results that you can get. But like I said, this picture isn't, um, oh, excuse me, this picture isn't uh, quite finished yet, but that was just one part of this picture I thought would be quite a handy little one to, to show you. So we can use the blend if sliders to knock out backgrounds and make it look as if we're making a selection and cut out. So there you go. So that's that for now. Uh, just so you know, if you want to check out more of what I'm doing, you can head over onto my website, which is glynjewis.com. Also on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash photography. And keep an eye on the website now, because very soon you can start seeing some tutorials, full tutorials with the, with the raw files attached as well that you can download and start using and learning all different kinds of techniques from basic Photoshop through to some quite complicated compositing and retouching. So keep an eye on those, but for now, that's all from me, and I'll see you next time.